Hi everyone, uh, my name is Shane and uh, it's, uh, it's truly a real honor to be able to speak at Emacs Conf. Um, I love Emacs, I love Emacs Lisp and uh, this is also another topic that um, really excites me ever since I got my hands on, um, on OpenAI's GPT-3 um, and six months ago I knew that it was important to research this for Emacs. You know, aside from being somebody who never wants to leave Emacs myself, um, and I hope that um, being one of the few Emacs users, possibly the only one that used, that had access um, to GPT-3 for this long, um, I, um, I hope that uh, I can contribute. So Emacs, uh, sorry, imaginary programming is uh, it's just, uh, it, it, it's based on prompt engineering currently, but it's an abstraction over prompt engineering. You can read about prompt engineering um, and uh, language models. Uh, that, that's quite easy to Google for. Um, and imaginary programming is a subfield of imaginary computing, which is just the larger domain of employing, um, of, of computing that's based on um, imagination, artificial imagination. So. Um, basically dreaming up user interfaces instead of or at least partially dreaming them up um, and and I suppose that uh, the it's not a it's a it's a fringe um, paradigm but it's it's not it's extremely useful it's a you know imaginary computing um, if if uh, if you're willing to call it that uh, would would be the what what what's used to imagine simulations for self-driving cars as they're trained for example um, but this technology finds its way to the to the public, and um, it should be in the public domain. Um, so Demis Hassabis, um, he's the founder of DeepMind, and he did his uh, he did his PhD in human imagination. Now he's working on artificial imagination. Um, so just a couple of days ago, um, I took Aleph Alpha's um, world model API. And I plugged it into Emacs's U browser, and now I have a way of generating text for the images instead of actually. So I, I can stay in my text-only um, Emacs, which is the way it should be. Um, so intelligent NFTs. Uh, I'll leave this for you guys to look at. Um, information bubbles. Um, so there are some disto. There, there's some potential. Um, bad outcomes um, from the runaway um, uh, the, the runaway uh, empowering of these these large language models and other other models um, in commercial hands it's um, it's causing information bubbles and uh, it, con ways of controlling people so um, my you know for example micro tasks and stuff that that the furthermore, just automating away or abstracting away the the, the role of a programmer um, and the automating more and more increasingly abstract tasks. Um, and I think the solution is to decentralize and break up these tasks. I have a um, potential way of doing that. But um, firstly, I'll talk about the imaginary web briefly, because um, the thing about these language models is um, they can replace basically everything on the internet. Basically, so like uh, re replace your Wikipedia Stack Overflow, um, replace um, conversation if you want it with, you know, from real people to to chatbots instead. Um, replace um, um, uh, replace basically anything. There's like a website for, and that means that rich media has gone from becoming um, images and video and and even from paywalls now into um, intelligent and truthful. So, you know, because generating fictional websites is going to become a very easy thing to do and it, actually the, 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 the best way to do it and, um, and the most useful way to do it. So then you need a source of truth. Um, so the imaginary web is a thing. Imaginary interpreters are a thing. So you imagine your interpreter and or, or you overlay um, prompting on top of a real interpreter to see what you might want to do in an interpreter 
and what, what you might want to say to somebody if you're talking to them. If you're inside, say, ERC and Emacs and the IRC client, and you prompt after somebody says something, then the prompt will probably suggest, you know, uh, what you might say in return, and then you, you can prompt like a multiverse, and you can pick from them. Um, like, so, um, yeah, so there's a, there's a bunch of crazy utilities for these language models. Um, so, paracosm versus multiverse. So, Mark Zuck wants you to live in his virtual reality as defined by him, and he's going to do it by using these models and um, to make you a fictional world that you can live in. You can do that, or you can um, use them yourself, and you build your own paracosm. And I think that's an important ability to be able to have. Otherwise, we will be um, like the Borg, and we'll be connected to Mark Zuckerberg. Um, so... Um, it's uh, truth is a hot topic. Um, so the way that I think we should do this to decentralize the language models is to use structuralism. Um, well, okay, so quickly, um, universal grammar, template metaprogramming, and GPT-3, what do they have in common? Well, you have some kind of basis. Um, so you, like... Um, you, you train your GPT-3 and then you do all your prompting on top of it and like a person is born with this grammar and then they quickly learn language and like with C++ templates you pre-process and then the runtime runs on that. Um, and so anyway, that was a, an aside. Okay, so structuralism. If you, um, This is quickly, I think you can decompile, I think you can break, so you can decompose the language models into units. But those units won't look like neurons, they would look like these um, and, and you put them onto a blockchain. But you can look at that later if you want, anyway. I'm going to skip straight to iLambda. So we're running out of time. So I'll just quickly show you the iLambda primitive in iLambda. So um, it evaluates instead of runs. So for example, here's the reduce function, and you've defined your imaginary lambda here. And it doesn't have a body. It's just got the comment and the um, and the parameters, and that's enough for um, to you, once you have that i lambda that runs now as a function. You can stick it into a reduce function, for example, and it'll reduce this list. Um, and uh, you could even remove uh, yeah yeah. So you kind of need the comment, otherwise you don't actually. Otherwise it, it's it's too hard to imagine what would happen next. But for a function. You can you can just um, you can literally have an idea fund even without the argument list. If it was just like generate fib sequence, and most likely um, when you run that def fund, it would like um, work the way you want it. But it, the more information you give the idea fund, the imaginary def fund, the the better it would capture the task. What what you're trying to do. In this case, you want to generate a Fibonacci sequence and. Um, and yeah, you can define de uh, define functions without having uh, a body, and they run an inference instead. Um, here's a way of overriding, say, the the language model that's used, for example, using dynamic scope. And um, so under the hood, idefun just uses an i lambda. Um, yeah, this function here just doubles things. So here's a function that um, gets you a hexadecimal color um, just from the name and you can create arbitrary functions like this um, so what you what we need is like a library of imaginary functions I think that match a language model so or yeah un, yeah anyway um, macros on the other hand as as uh, different from functions they actually macro expand and generate code so when you macro expand this you'll get this and uh, that's because this has an arity of three. And then when you macro expand that underlying macro, it generates the actual source code. And that you can, so you can actually run these macros and um, it will cache the output. Uh, it, will cache, it will cache the source code so the macro runs the same every single time uh, or generates the same code. But you can just use it to generate code really easily while you're programming. Uh, so yeah, I think, uh, I hope that uh, this has been informative. I well, wasn't too much time, but 
Um, you, th there's plenty of material for you to dig into it more if you're interested. Um, thank you very much for letting me talk today. Um, peace out.